In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. In the beginning, the Spirit of God swept over the face of the waters. into being, created by a God who exists in community. Friends in Christ, welcome. I'm Rev. Sandra Nixon, Coordinating Minister for Trinity Grace Church here in Vancouver, BC. TGUC is an inclusive, open-minded, and progressive Christian community. We believe God is at work in our communities and that we are each called to use our unique gifts and perspectives to make a difference and manifest God's love, healing and justice in the world. And so as we join in this virtual worship space, we know we are all connected in a very real way through the spirit which has brought us here and through the light that dwells in us and between us. Empowering and uplifting God, you speak to your people in so many ways, in wind and fire, in cloud and thunder, in moments of great confusion and great turmoil, and in the spaces in between. We know that out of chaos emerges creativity and possibility if we allow your spirit and your word to move among us. In the busy, in the quiet, in the ups and downs of our lives, help us to hear your voice. Help us to live your love. Help us to be your spirit-filled people this day and every day.
in the beginning. When God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep. God's spirit brooded like a bird above the watery abyss. Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good. And God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness God called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. And God said, Let there be a dome in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. So God made the dome, and separated the waters that were under the dome from the waters that were above the dome. And it was so. God called the dome sky. And there was evening, and there was morning, the second day. And God said, Let the waters under the sky be gathered together into one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth, and the waters that were gathered together God called seas, and God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let the earth put forth vegetation, plants yielding seed, and fruit trees of every kind on earth that bear fruit with the seed in it. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed of every kind, and trees of every kind bearing fruit with the seed in it. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning the third day. And God said, Let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night, and let them be for seasons and for days and years, and let them be lights in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth. And it was so. God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day, the lesser light to rule the night and the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth, to rule over the day and over the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the fourth day. And God said, Let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures. And let the birds fly above the earth across the dome of the sky. So God created the great sea monsters, and every living creature that moves of every kind with which the waters swarm. And every winged bird of every kind, and God saw that it was good, and God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful, and multiply, and fill the waters in the seas, and let birds multiply upon the earth. And there was evening, and there was morning, the fifth day. Then God said, Let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things and wild animals of the earth of every kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals of the earth of every kind, and the cattle of every kind, and everything that creeps upon the ground of every kind. And God saw that it was good. God spoke, Let us make human beings in our image. Make them reflecting our nature so they can be responsible for the fish in the sea, the birds in the air, the cattle, and yes, earth itself, and every animal that moves on the face of earth. God created human beings. God created them godlike, reflecting God's nature. And it was so. God saw everything that God had made, and indeed, it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus, the heavens and the earth were created, and all their multitude, and God rested on the seventh day from all the work that he had done. 
So God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it, because on it God rested from all the work that was done in creation. Friends, there doesn't seem to be any place to start except with what has been front and center in the news this week, which is the tragic death and murder of George Floyd in the U.S. in Minneapolis on May 25th. The explosion of grief, anger, and frustration that has rocked the U.S. and Canada and other major cities around the world is unlike anything we've seen in recent memory. The circumstances surrounding Mr. Floyd's death, along with other recent high-profile stories of other racist acts and deaths of black people, have propelled protests of solidarity across the world and resurfaced smoldering anger and frustration in many communities. There has been a lot of news and social media to digest, much of it important and helpful as we journey through our own reactions and reflections, individually and as a society. But in a situation where the sheer scope and nature of the protests is bound to become the center story, it can be easy to forget the lives at the epicenter of what has happened, the lives forever altered, the lives of the victim's family, the lives of the perpetrators and their families, the lives of those who witnessed this tragedy. I came across an article earlier this week about the owner of the shop where the store clerk made the call to the police about George Floyd, the call which set in motion the encounter with police that would lead to his death. Before reading the article, I sat for a while thinking about that shop clerk and the shop owner, two people of many who have been directly affected by what happened. I thought about the many different ways they could be feeling and reacting. Perhaps they would be feeling worried about what others are thinking. They might be fearful of retaliation by protesters. One or both could be overwhelmed with regret or paralyzed with grief or still be numb or in shock. Or one or both could be someone who thought the call was justified and be in denial about what happened. About the store clerk, I don't know. But what we do know is that the owner of the store, Mahmoud Abumayala, has publicly expressed his support for the protests and his sadness for the part that his store played in the tragedy. And he has donated towards the cost of George Floyd's memorial service. This is just one example of many of courage and humility coming out of this terrible situation and an example of being willing to consider and reflect on the part one has played in creating the conditions for something like this to be able to happen. And an example of allowing that reflection to guide you, if not to fix the situation because some things can't be fixed, to help to be an agent of healing and change. And in doing so, to also allow the spirit to heal your own heart. And perhaps this is one of the messages that is coming out of this tragedy and the resulting unleashing of pent up pain and grief and anger. The message that individually and as a society, we need to consider how we think and how we act, our own explicit or implicit and subconscious racism and for white folks, our privilege, and how it affects the experiences of others, and how it contributes to a system that continues to oppress and discriminate against others. Right now, the main conversation is about racism as it needs to be. At the forefront for us needs to be the recognition that racism exists in our country, in our cities, in our neighborhoods. Racism towards black people, towards indigenous people, towards Asian people, towards all people who have a skin tone that is not white, and towards anyone we are busy stereotyping and discriminating against based on their ancestry, where they're from, or the color of their skin. 
We've all heard it said that it's difficult to hate someone once you've gotten to know them, to hear their story and come to see them as human, being not so different from you, and finding commonality in shared human experience. As Christians, we have the example of Jesus who healed many people by affirming their inherent worth and restoring their place in community when they had been pushed to the margins out of fear or hate. Which is why creating safe space where diverse people and groups can encounter one another and share their stories and build relationships is a big piece of what the church needs to be about because that's where true healing happens and how that healing happens in relationship. Those communities become communities of belonging where people feel and know that they belong to each other and find healing and then are empowered as a collective to work for change. Change to systems and societies where hate and discrimination continue to fester and wound. Today we celebrate Trinity Sunday, and we have the first story in our Holy Scriptures, the first story of creation. What might these two things have in common? Well, in the Genesis passage we hear, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And God said, let there be light. In these first three lines, notice who is present. God creating, the Spirit hovering, moving over the waters, and God's word speaking light into being. The Word, who the Apostle John tells us is Christ the Word, who was with God and was God, through whom all things come into being, in whom is life. In other words, the God at the heart of our faith has always existed in community, in relationship. And God says later in the story, let us make humankind in our image, in our likeness. Friends, we belong to God, our source, our breath and the light within us. And through that belonging, we belong to each other. Mother Teresa once diagnosed the world's ills in this way. She said, We've just forgotten that we belong to each other. This week during our online book study, I mentioned the challenge of being a preacher right now. And someone commented, yes, this week it will be hard to find good news. And ultimately that is what I want to leave you with, the good news that is always there when we look with the eyes of faith. So here it is for this week. It's good news that despite violent state-sanctioned efforts to quell protest, the story of George Floyd and many others is being told. It's good news that many of us are allowing ourselves to be challenged by the issues and questions and realities being named as part of the response to this tragedy including the reality of racism and discrimination in our country. It's good news that many of us are responding to that challenge with a renewed commitment to becoming more informed, increasing our understanding and examining our own biases and actions. It's good news that white police officers are calling out their fellow officers for unjust and racist actions that contravene the law and their sworn duty to protect. It's good news that the church is both speaking up and speaking out while also acknowledging the racism and other isms that continue to exist within its own walls. 
It's good news that this reflecting and speaking out and recommitment to justice and inclusion are rooted in our call to be the body of Christ, incarnating God's love and compassion for the healing of the world and for justice, peace, and abundant life for all. And friends, it is good news that we belong to God, whose spirit is working to remind us that we belong to each other and must undertake this work together in community. May the fire of the spirit embrace the fires of despair and anger that are burning. May the breath of the spirit flow through the people so that all people may breathe freely and fully. Amen.
Let us pray. Holy God, we were created in your image, an image of mutuality and respect for one another, an image of a dance ever moving, ever in tune with others, an image of community with shared blessing and mission. You have given us dominion over the work of your hands. You have charged us to be fruitful and multiply, to make disciples of all nations. We have abused the Earth's resources for our own selfish gain, and the consequences wreak havoc upon the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and every living thing that moves upon the Earth. We have regarded some of your children as other, and therefore beyond the reach of your love and care because their professed faith in you, or lack thereof, or their culture, or their color of their skin, or their gender identity, or sexual orientation, or ability, is different from our own. Friends, a word of hope. Into the dryness of our troubled world, God sends a soaking shower of blessings. Into the gloom of our doubts, the Creator sends rays of light. Into the swirling anxiety that surrounds us, the Spirit breathes the calm of compassion. Into the uncertainty and challenges that mark our journey, the Holy One gently eases an affirming love that leaves time and limitations behind. God desires to see broken relationships restored and has heard our prayer. In the name of Jesus the Christ and in the power of the Holy Spirit, we are forgiven. May you be renewed in the hope and assurance that you are irreplaceable in God's eyes and that you do not walk alone.
And now God calls us from this time of worship to share the hope of abundant life in the presence of hardship, to share relationship that transcends the barriers of isolation, and to do what we can where we are to be the body of Christ. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit go with you and before you today and forever.